Hello, uh, welcome to another uh, Houdini session. My name is Gianvito Serra, and today we're going to be learning about attributes. Uh, attributes, uh, this part is definitely one of my uh, favorites. Uh, attributes is, to me, one of the things that makes Houdini the powerful and very flexible application that it is. Uh, and uh, today I, I'm going to explain you a little bit about what they are and how, do you, how to use them, okay? Coming from a different application, uh, attributes, the word attributes may have completely different meaning. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, attributes are associated with parameters in a window or something like that. Or in some cases, they're associated with, you know, data that you store on elements. In the case of Houdini, uh, attributes is indeed data that can be stored on any of the elements, you know, of any type. So um, when we talk about storing on elements, we talk about points, primitives, or vertices. So let's just look a little bit about, let's go ahead and create a geometry operator and dig in a little bit into some things that we can do with attributes, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and use a file operator to load uh, the scan head or the infinite scan head, rather. Oh, let me actually browse for it. There we go. There we go. So, attributes, uh, you are probably have actually already seen attributes. You haven't, you just didn't know they were attributes. So, for example, anytime that we actually use a normal operator, we create the normals, okay? And you can visualize them like this. You will notice that sometimes you can add them to vertices, sometimes you can add them to points, okay? The, um, attributes, you know, Sometimes too, we actually went and use, for example, a color operator to add color to our meshes. Okay, so we'll come in here and then add some colors to the points, for example. We can even make them uh, random colors on a per point basis, okay? Or sometimes if some use a paint operator to come in and actually paint color and the colors of the mesh, okay? What we're actually doing here behind the scenes is that Houdini is actually creating attributes, okay? So if we look at the geometry, and let me go ahead and actually delete the groups so this looks a little bit more clear. Then go to edit, delete all the groups. There we go. Okay. So we notice here, I mean, immediately from the moment that this asset comes in, and we look down here, we have what looks like is actually two attributes, okay, which is a point attribute, which is P, and a vertex attribute, which is UVs, okay? When we add the normal operator, we now created an attribute called N, which is the normals. We still have P, which is a position, and we still have the UVs, okay? Very cool. Now, when we get into the color, all of a sudden we have a new attribute called CD, which is the way who Houdini holds attributes. We also have normals, have P, which is position, and then we have UVs. Okay, so a lot of those concepts are very familiar from coming in other packages. Uh, where Houdini actually excels on is the fact that these attributes can be completely arbitrary. Okay, so in, say, for example, I wanted to actually make my own attribute. I can very simply, for example, put an add a attribute create sub. Okay? And the attribute create sub allows me to create really any type of attribute I want. I can call it my attribute. And I can say, give it a value of, you know, 0. Point. Let me just give it a value that is a random number. So rand dollar pt, like we did on the copy one. Okay? So we now, if we look in here at middle mass, you will notice that I have still my P and I still have my UV attributes, like we did from before. We also have an attribute called my attribute, which I created here. 
and it's a float point which has this uh, particular value associated to it okay so that's pretty cool um so you can simply fit this into the main thread that we have here and this attribute will be persisted all the way down my network and we will be able to actually see it or actually it will actually be there so if we now come for example to right click on any node and come to the spreadsheet which we used to use to actually see positions and to see colors and things like that we can now see that we also have an arbitrary attribute called my attribute okay just to make it a little bit more clear i'm going to actually put a filter in here so now you're only looking at that and this is basically the attribute that we created inside of here even if i rename to something else like my attribute point for example you will see that this actually updates here and then we can simply come here and multiply by four for example and immediately see the values change in here very cool we can even go and actually make it a vector type and also then i have three fields for it and we can say that this could be a random number based on the dollar ty so what the good the great thing about this is that for every single asset type or for every single element type i can carry a lot of information which allows me to operate on the on the assets in a particular way um this is in conceptually conceptually slightly similar to groups except they so much more expansive than what can group, groups can do a uh, groups really i'll tell you for every point for every primitive that you are either in the group or not in the group okay on an attribute you can say that for any attribute a point will have any arbitrary value it could be 0 0.5 it could be 0 0.7 it could be really anything you want okay we could even make these attribute types a string for example and actually give it a name which is say say my point number is and do dollar pt and then now what we have is a string attribute which changes for every point okay so it's very pow it's a very powerful concept uh, and we'll see really soon here how we can apply this to what we do but just to point out a few more things in addition to creating attributes which are associated with <coughs> points you can also associate an attribute say for example with primitives okay so now all of a sudden my attribute is based on an actual primitive number or an actual primitive okay but it's just returning the first point associated with a primitive okay we can make it for example a detail attribute uh, which will make it basically it will be carried with the actual full geometry at all times we could even make it on a per vertex basis which means that every uh, every vertex will have an actual uh, attribute associated with it okay a very common one that we use for vertices is uv's because uv's a lot you want to be able to split you want to be able for a, a vertex to have multiple uv's therefore that is what is why is a vertex attribute okay <clears throat> because we have the flexibility to be able to control whether an attribute is part of vertex of faces or of or, or points or whatnot we can do all sorts of things so for example that's how we can for example make the normals either be on the points or be on the vertices in case we wanted to have vertex normal so basically a vertex for a point basically a normal for each vertex face that we have here can even put normal some primitives if we want to okay which will look something at, which would then carry the normal of a pr the primitive normal like this okay and we can also put put it in the detail which wouldn't make too much sense with a normal but it is possible to do so a lot of, you can even do the same thing with the color uh, so say for example i didn't want i didn't want the color on a per, per, per points because that's actually creating a soft edge in between them you can simply come here and switch it to primitive and now i have random colors per primitive and i can you know quickly change the seed and actually see the primitive colors uh, change on the fly 
can even assign them to vertex and then you get like this cool little segmented looking thing where like uh, for uh, where vertices meet at a point they may still have different colors you know so very cool so we can even use attributes to for example get information about the mesh like for example the the actual you know bounding area of the each point so with these kind of things really this guy is the limit and in the next few lessons we're going to be looking a little bit more into some of the things that we can do with uh, attributes um very cool and that will be for today uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next